Hi, I'm Peter Brock of BRE. That's Brock Racing Enterprises. I've done a lot of pretty interesting things in my life, but probably I'm best known for this particular car here, which is known as the Daytona Cobra Coupe. It was the uh, first American car to win uh, the FIA World Championship, but it's also recently been recognized by the uh, U.S. Department of Interior and it's been selected as the first car to go into the register of historically significant vehicles. So that was quite an honor. It was great to win the, the championship, but be recognized by the U.S. government as an important car in the United States is, makes me pretty proud. Let me tell you a little bit about what makes this car so unique. Back in 1964, when I was working for Carroll Shelby, we decided to take the Cobras to Europe to race against Ferrari. The only problem was that the standard Cobra only had a top speed of about 165 miles per hour, and we knew that we were going to be running against the Ferraris, which had a speed of about 185 miles per hour, so it wouldn't be competitive. We've been fine on the short courses in the U.S., but going to Europe to run at Le Mans or Spa or Mons or any of those tracks, it wouldn't have been competitive. The uh, FIA, which was the uh, Federation International of the Automobiles, decided to make a rule change. It was called Appendix J, which allowed a manufacturer to completely change the body on their automobile, provided the chassis stayed the same. And this allowed manufacturers like Jaguar and Aston Martin, Maserati and Ferrari, and of course Shelby, to change the body on the chassis. So we took a standard Cobra, which is rather an archaic design, and put this modern body on it. And it was a rather unique challenge to do it because it, it didn't look like everything else that was running out there with a, with a long tapered back end that pointed on it. I had read some papers uh, that the Germans had worked on in the late 1930s uh, about aerodynamics and automobiles, which wanted to keep the roof lines as flat as possible and take it back, and instead of taking it back to a point with a traditional teardrop shape that people thought was the best for streamlining, just chop it off, keep the line as straight as possible. If you ever have a chance to look at a standard Cobra, the rather blunt nose with the headlights up pretty high on them, and they have a straight up windshield with no top on it, so there's a lot of drag. The air that hits it is pretty turbulent over the whole car. So the front end of this car was designed to reduce that frontal area, but improve the penetration into the air, because as you double the speed of the car, the drag goes up by the square. So it's a, a real problem to get top speed out of an automobile to make a change in it. So the interesting thing about this particular front end is that the air goes in the radiator at this point, and it comes out at this point over the top. And that's not only to expel the air so that it doesn't heat up the engine compartment. Actually, the air coming out of this point and hitting this little point here interrupts that flow, which normally give it some lift like an airplane wing. So by bringing the air out here, we disturb that lift and it keeps the front end on the ground when you get up to speeds over 150 miles per hour. Designing headlights on a race car is pretty important because what you want to do is you want to smooth the airflow going over the car. Obviously, flat headlights in here are going to create a problem. So enclosing them in a transparency allows you to have both the light and the clean airflow. This is pretty a unique thing way back in 1964 to be able to enclose the headlights is because at that time nobody was really sure what the improvements in aerodynamics could do. So that was just one of the small details that we did on the car that made it so efficient. This particular setup here was uh, nicely done because we just formed the pattern in aluminum and then formed the plastic cover over it and then fitted up all flush. So you end up with a completely smooth flush edge all the way around. It, uh, doesn't impede the light and definitely improves the speed. If you ever get passed by a Daytona Coupe, you probably won't forget it because this view is the most distinctive view of the car. The whole chopped off tail was pretty radical when it was designed in 1963. But I actually got the idea from some Germans who had figured the thing out in 1937. They never got the chance to put it in production because of World War II 
and I discovered some drawings that gave me the idea to do this. But it was very, very difficult to convince people that this idea of chopping off the tail was really more efficient than the way tars had always been done in the past with a teardrop tail. The reason it's more efficient than any of the others is that the flat roof keeps the air attached. If the back end of the car begins to turn about more than seven degrees, the air begins to separate and turbulent, which creates more of an area of turbulence in the back than just chopping it off. So that's why it's more efficient. It's also a great design element because it gives you more room in the car for extra fuel, spare tire, luggage, or whatever. So now all modern cars are really chopped off in the back end. If you look back the way they were done in 1948-49 with a tapered back end, you'll see there's been quite a change. So the Daytona has really had quite an influence on automotive design. Maybe not quite as radical, but it's the same idea.